swords. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, wilt cast them down into the lowest pit. Men of blood and treachery shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, who abides in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you from his pinions and under his wings will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that starts in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but if you will not come near, near, near you, you will only look at your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High, your habitation, no evil shall fall be, befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will give his angels in charge you of the guard, you in all your ways. Oh, their hands, they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder and the young lion and the serpent. You will tremble under your foot. Because he cleaves to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him with all long life. I will satisfy him and show my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O dweller of the wilderness, and angel in the body, thou wast a wonder worker, O God, bearing Father John. Thou didst receive heavenly gifts through fasting, vigil, and prayer, healing, and sick, and the souls, those drawn to thee by faith. Glory to him who gave thee strength. Glory to him who granted thee a crown. Glory to him who grants healing to all, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. As there is no boldness in us because of the multitude of our sins, do thou, O virgin Theotokos, intercede with the Son, whom thou hast borne for the entreaty of a mother, has great power to win the favor of the Master. Despise not, the, despise not a holy, venerable lady, and prayers of sinners, for he took himself to suffer for our sake, is merciful and strong to save. Let thy tender mercies, O Lord, speedily go before us, for we are become exceedingly poor. Help us, O God, our salvation for the glory of thy name, O Lord, deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one.
Take it back by Pasca Spirit of truth, for everywhere and fill us all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls, O good one. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good both towards men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good both towards men. O Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. It is time for the Lord to act. Bless now. Blessed is our God always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Pray for me now. May the Lord direct your steps. Remember the Holy Mass. May the Lord God limit his kingdom always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages.
from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious Lady Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. To the Lord. O Lord, our God, whose power is incomparable, whose glory is incomprehensible, whose mercy is immeasurable, whose love for man is inexpressible, both down in us and on this holy house with pity, O Master, and impart the riches of thy mercy and thy compassion to us and to those who pray with us. For unto thee our do all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Blessed art thou, O oh Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And
again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. The venerating our most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious Lady, Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves to each other and all our life unto Christ our God. Amen. Amen. O thou who has given us grace with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and this promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wouldst grant their requests, fulfill now, O Lord, the petitions of thy servants as may be expedient for them. Granting us in this world the knowledge of thy truth, in the world to come life everlasting. For thou art a good God and lovest mankind, and the day do we send us glory <coughs> to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of And to your spirit, the Prochemenon in the fourth tone, O Lord, how manifold are thy works, in wisdom hast thou made them all. From the epistle of the Holy Apostle Paul to the Hebrews. Brethren, when God made a promise to Abraham because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently adored, he obtained the promise, for men swear by one greater than themselves, and an oath for confirmation is the end of all their dispute. Thus God willing to show more abundantly unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that to immutable things in which is possible for God to lie, we may have the strongest consolation who had fled for refuge to hold fast the hope set before us, which we have an anchor of the soul, sure and firm, which we entereth in even within the veil where the forerunner Jesus is entered for us, made a high priest forever, according to Melchizedek. And to your spirit, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For you love righteousness.
unrighteousness and hate iniquity. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Let us attend and let us hear the Holy Gospel. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. In those days, one of the crowd came to Jesus and bowed to him, saying, Master, I have brought to you my son, who has a dumb spirit, and whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth, and he is wasting away. And I told your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. And he answered him, saying, O oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How shall, long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought him to him. And the spirit, when it saw Jesus, immediately threw the boy into convulsions. And he fell down on the ground and rolled about foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, How long is it since this has come upon him? And he said, from his infancy, oftentimes it has thrown him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. But Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to the man of faith. At once the father of the boy cried out and said with tears, I do believe, help my unbelief. Now when Jesus saw that a crowd was rapidly gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, go out of him and enter him no more. And crying out and violently convulsing him, it went out of him, and he became like one dead, so that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him and stood, and he stood up. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind can be cast out in no way except by prayer and fasting. And leaving that place, they were passing through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know it. For he was teaching his disciples and saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. 
and having been killed, he will rise again on the third day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today is already the fourth Sunday of Great Lent. We commemorate St. John Climacus, St. Troparin Kuntaki in the hymn. I'll take us a different focus today. So if you sit down with your New Testament in front of you, open it up, you first come to the four canonical Gospels of Saints Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, those four Gospels on the altar table also case, encased in gold because they're kind of the heart of the whole New Testament. Those four Gospels proclaiming the good news of Jesus from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Today we heard from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, of course, about the young boy who was cured by Jesus. The father was very emotionally distressed about his son. Jesus cured him. But the emphasis today, I'm saying, Jesus predicted his, he prophesied his, his passion for the second time in two weeks now. We heard it last week, we heard it again today. Jesus prophesies his passion, be killed by those in authority. He will die on the cross, he will be raised from the dead. That's in, our, in the gospel. Now the gospels were not written first. The gospels were written after the epistles were written. So most, most of the epistles were written before the first gospel, written about the middle of the, uh, the 60s of the first Christian century. Paul's epistles, maybe John's epistles. But the epistle to the Hebrews was probably written before the first gospel according to St. Mark. We heard during Lent the epistle to the Hebrews, but focus on that a little bit this morning. So if you read the epistles, you won't know that Jesus stood before the Sanhedrin to be convicted. If you read the epistles alone, you'll never hear about Pontius Pilate. You, hear about, you read the epistles, you never know that Jesus was scourged before he went to the cross. You won't hear the words of Jesus from the cross, how he came down from the cross, how he was buried. None of that is in the epistles. If you read the epistles, you hardly get any of the details of the narrative of the, of the crucifixion of our Lord. The epistles were giving us the, the theology of the cross. So a Christian, before the gospels were written, Christians were already theologizing, explaining the meaning of the cross for us, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, uh, he was resurrected from the dead. That's all in the epistles of St. Paul and other, other of the great epistle writers. So the narratives come later. The narrative comes in the Gospels, read those during Holy Week, of course, the death and resurrection of Christ. The epistles already are theologizing before the Gospels are even written. It's the first Christian theology, this wonderful, powerful theology about the cross, about the meaning of the Lord's death, about his resurrection from the dead, what it means for us, about ethical life, moral life of Christians. It's very true of the epistle to the Hebrews that we heard about this morning. The epistle to the Hebrews, we don't know who wrote that epistle. It's kind of a mystery to this day. Back in the third century, Origen said, only God knows who wrote the epistle to the Hebrews. But that epistle, it's a really magnificent epistle. It's very profound, it's very well argued, it's very rhetorical, it's very rich, very challenging. Uh, the epistle writer to the Hebrews, most probably a, a Jew, a fellow Jew, writing to Jewish Christians, trying to encourage them in the faith. They're probably being either persecuted, almost persecuted, or maybe sliding back into their old practices. He's trying to exhort them chastise him and exhort him at the same time. So he's giving us his whole image of who Christ is. 
the heart of the epistle is that Jesus Christ is the one great high priest. He made the one great sacrifice of himself on the cross. He's the great high priest who enters the, king, uh, enters the very inner sanctuary of the realm of God, offering that sacrifice <coughs> eternally for our salvation. <coughs> we can now enter that throne of grace. Now the epistle begins with a magnificent beginning here, uh, worthy of the Gospel of St. John's beginning in the prologue. So the epistle begins in the following way. Really, it's, it's really a sermon. It's a long, beautifully theological sermon by the, uh, by the uh, writer here. In many and various ways, God spoke of old to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the ages. He reflects the glory of God and bears the very stamp of his nature, upholding the universe by the word of his power. When he had made purification for our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has obtained is more excellent than theirs. So he is the very radiance of the glory of the Father, the very, very stamp of his very nature. He is divine. The divine Son of God becomes incarnate, or die to purify us of our sins, of course, to be seated back at the right hand of the Father. So that's the real heart of the epistle here. So he's trying to tell us who Jesus is and what the sacrifice is all about upon the cross, superseding what we found in the Jewish sacrificial system. There are other themes in the epistle that I want to explore a little bit today. So another theme of the epistle is the humanity of Jesus, how human he is, fully one of us, fully one of our brethren, if you like. So even though he's exalted, even though he's the very son of God who became incarnate, even though he sits at the right hand of the Father, he is one of us, he's very human. He focuses on that humanity, so we can be encouraged, even Jesus himself was tempted. We don't think of those terms, perhaps. Jesus was tempted. He never fell prey to the temptation. Jesus, without sin, of course. He's the sinless son of God, but he was always tempted like we were tempted. Here are a couple of very key passages from this epistle in chapter two here. Therefore, he had to be made, he, he was made like his brethren in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make expiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself was, had suffered and been tempted, he was able to help those who are tempted. He was suffered, he, he was tempted. Jesus was tempted, he overcame temptation. He's sympathetic with our temptations. He's sympathetic even with our sins, hope we don't fall into them. So we have a sympathetic high priest. He tasted temptation. He never fell prey to it. He is without sin, of course. He says further in chapter 4, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we have, for we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sinning. Very key text there. Tempted like we are, yet without sinning. Let us, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in, in, to help in time of need. He is a sympathetic high priest who has been tempted, yet he is without sin. When we fall into temptation, Jesus doesn't judge us, not trying to you know, make us feel bad about it. He's, he's sympathetic with us. He knows temptation. So the incarnation is such a powerful event. It's not just Jesus kind of roaming around the earth clad in a human nature. He becomes truly human, even suffering temptation itself, according to the sacred writer of the epistle to the Hebrews. Now, as I said before, we don't know much about the details of the crucifixion of Christ based on the epistles, even including Hebrews. How there's one great text here that clearly refers to Gethsemane, Jesus suffering in Gethsemane. What, what the suffering he went through emotionally before he goes to the cross. He tells us the following, the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and he was heard for his godly fear. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. It probably is Gethsemane there. With loud cries and tears, Jesus cried to the Father. He was heard by him. He was heard by not meaning he, he escaped the crucifixion, which he did not, of course. He was heard because he was raised from the dead after the crucifixion. So even Jesus had to go through the cross. He suffered this. And by the obedience that he suffered, he became more perfect. His humanity was perfected through the very act of suffering and dying on the cross. 
He's now a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is a very enigmatic kind of a mysterious figure from the book of Genesis chapter 14. He has no genealogy, no parents, no genealogy. We don't know where he came from. We don't even know his ultimate fate. He serves as an image or a type of Jesus the high priest who is yet to come. So Jesus is the high priest. The high priest fulfills the type of Melchizedek as the eternal high priest, again, going to the cross for our salvation. So that's our, that's our encouragement. Now, the writer can be very chastising to the people he's writing to. He tells them, don't you dare fall away from the faith. There's no salvation for you. Don't fall away from the faith. Don't apostatize. Don't give up on the faith. You may be persecuted. Jesus was persecuted. We know what persecution is like, but don't give up on the faith. Stay with it. He's always encouraging them. He's saying, you should be ready for real food now. No longer just drinking milk, the milk of basic teaching. Yet you, know more, you should know about the faith, more elaborate understanding of, of the cross and the resurrection and the incarnation. He's trying to really encourage them in the faith. We're in Great Lent. We're in the fourth Sunday of Great Lent. Maybe you're getting a little tired of Lent. Uh, maybe it's wearing thin a little bit. Perhaps uh, all the initial uh, zeal kind of wears off a little bit. We're kind of struggling to the finish line. Jesus crossed the finish line on our behalf as the pioneer who won the race. Of course, we can follow him. There's another very fine text about that to encourage us as we go through the rest of Lent, for all times in our life, actually. Chapter 12. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint but rather be healed. Strive for peace with all men for the honor holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strength, strengthen your, straighten your weak knees. So it's got a nice image there. Uh, there's an image of an athlete here who's exhausted, kind of running out of energy. He has to like lift himself up and finish that race, cross that finish line. The famous text in this epistle saying, there's a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, looking down upon us as we contest for the, for the trophy. The cloud of witnesses exhorts us, cheers us on if you like, they pray for us. So we're all, we're all part of this larger ensemble we call the church, the living and the dead, the Lord, the saints, the mother of God, all those who are praying for us in the heavenly realm, those praying for us in the earthly realm, pray for ourselves in the liturgy. We're part of this huge, huge ensemble known as the body of Christ. Jesus, the high priest, gave us the, the church. We can enter the Holy of Holies, offer that sacrifice which is eternal, and find grace before the very throne of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. in a 
a place where there is neither pain nor sickness nor sorrow, but life everlasting. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, and visitation for the servants and handmaids of God of this community, for those who may be traveling, for those who are absent, for a reason worthy of a blessing. We pray especially for the handmaiden of God, Crystal, and her newborn son, Maverick, the handmaiden of God, Sarah, and her newborn son, Zachary, the handmaiden of God, Victoria, and her newborn son, Moses, the handmaiden of God, Deanna, and her newborn daughter, Lily, the handmaiden of God, Olivia, and her newborn daughter, Felicity. We pray for the handmaidens of God, Elva, Anne, Suzanne, Rebecca, Natasha, Svetlana, and their preborn children. We pray for the sick and suffering. We pray especially for the children of God, Eli and John, for the servants and handmaids of God, Curtis, Connie, Irene, Paul, Cyril, Candace, Jake, Jan, Joanne, John, Joyce, Karen, Wayne, Larissa, Lori, Mary, Mitchell, Patricia, Wayne, Matushka, Elizabeth. We pray for the poor and the destitute, for abandoned and abused and orphaned children, for those being persecuted for the faith, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for those who are suffering, wounded, grieving, displaced, or held hostage because of the war in Gaza and the war in Ukraine. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, hostilities across the Middle East and in the Ukraine, and that reconciliation and lasting peace may flourish there. We pray thee, O Lord, hearken and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for those who bring offerings and to do good works in this holy and all venerable temple, for those who labor and those who sing, and for the people here present who await thy great and rich mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. O Lord, our God, accept this fervent supplication, thy servants have mercy of us according to the multitude of thy mercy. Send down thy bounties upon us and upon all thy people who await the rich mercy that comes from thee. For thou art a merciful God, and lovest mankind, and to thee do we send up glory. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
made us thy humble and worthy servants, offered worthy to be ministers of thy holy altar. By the power of thy Holy Spirit, make us sufficient for this service, so that, standing blamelessly before thy holy glory, we offer thee a sacrifice of praise, for thou art he worketh all things in all men. Grant, O Lord, that our sacrifice may be acceptable and well pleasing before thee, for our sins were the errors of the people. With God. All unto thee are due all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us from the mercy. O God, whose mercy and compassion has visited our loneliness, who has set us thy humble and sinful and worthy servants before thy holy altar, to be ministers of thy holy, of thy, of thy holy altar, by the power of thy Holy Spirit, strengthen us for this service. We grant the speech and the opening of our mouth to call the grace of the Holy Spirit upon the gifts that are about to be set forth. With God. That God is always thy light, my we send the glory to thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
upon you, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. Holy Spirit himself, minister together with us all the days of our life. Remember me, Holy Ghost. Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts now offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have Yes. 
who was in the bosom of thee, the God and Father, who born of the woman, the holy Theotokos, ever Virgin Mary, who born under the law, to condemn sin in his flesh, that those who were dead and Adam might be made alive in thy Christ himself. He lived in the world and gave us commandments of salvation, and releasing us from the delusions of idolatry, he brought us to knowledge of thee, the true God and Father, obtaining for himself, as his own people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And having cleansed us with water and sanctified us by the Holy Spirit, he gave himself as a ransom to death in which we were held captive, sold under sin. In descending through the cross into Hades, that he might fill all things with himself, he loosed the pangs of death. And when he had risen on the third day, having made for all flesh a path to the resurrection from the dead, since it is not possible for the offer of life to be held by corruption, he became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn of the dead, that in all things he might be made preeminence over all. Ascending into heaven, he sat down at the right hand of thy majesty and high, and he will come to render to every man according to his works. He has memorials of his saving passion. He has left us these things which we have set forth according to his command. When he was about to go forth with voluntary, never memorable, and life-giving death, in the night in which he gave himself up to the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and pure hands. When he had shown to thee the God and Father, and had given thanks, and blessed it and held and broken it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take ye this in my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. Amen. Likewise, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine, and having mingled it and given thanks, and having blessed it and beheld it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. For the remission of sins. Amen. Do this, remember to me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and confess my resurrection. Therefore, we also, Master, remembering his saving passion, life giving cross, his three day burial and resurrection from the dead. His ascension into heaven, the sitting at the right hand of thee, the God and Father, and his glorious and dread second coming. Offering unto thee, thy known of thine own, on behalf of all heaven, for all. We Instead, may we find mercy and grace with all the saints who through the ages have been well pleasing to thee. Ancestors, fathers, mothers, patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, teachers, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith. Especially with our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary. All of creation rejoice.
perhaps for good reason. Have mercy on them, and according to us, according, according to the multitude of thy mercies. Fill their treasuries with every good thing. Preserve their marriages in peace and harmony. Raise the infants, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the faint-hearted. Gather together all those who are dispersed. Lead them back to our heir, and join them to thy holy Catholic and apostolic church. Free those who are held next by unclean spirits. Travel those who travel by land, by sea, and by air. Defend the widows, protect the orphans, free the captives, heal the sick. Remember, O oh God, those who are in courts, in mind, in exile, in harsh labor, and those any kind of affliction, necessity, or distress. Remember, O oh Lord our God, all those who entreat thy great loving kindness, those who love us and those who hate us, those that ask and pray for them and worthy though we may be. Remember thy all thy people, Lord our God, and pour out thy rich mercy upon them all, granting them all their petitions for our for their salvation. Do thou thyself, O God, remember all those we have not remembered through ignorance, forgetfulness, for the multitude of names, since thou knowest the name and age of each, even from his mother's womb. For thou, O Lord, art the helper of the helpless, hope of the hopeless, the savior of the storm, the haven of the voyager, the physician of the sick. Be all things to all men, O thou who knowest each man at his request, his home and his need. Deliver the city, O Lord, in every city and countryside, from famine, plague, earthquake, flood, fire, the sword, foreign invasion, and civil war. Among the first, remember, Lord, our Metropolitan Deacon, our Archbishop Daniel. Grant them for thy holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days. By thee to define the word of thy truth. And Remember, O Lord, all the Orthodox Episcopal right to right to find the word of thy truth. Remember, O Lord, my unworthiness also, by the multitude of thy compassions. Forgive my every transgression, both voluntary and involuntary. And do not, because of my sins, withhold the grace of the Holy Spirit upon from these gifts here set forth. Remember, O Lord, the presbytery, the diaconate in Christ, every order of the clergy, and none of us who stand about the holy altar we put to shame. Visit us with thy loving kindness, O Lord. Manifest thyself to us in thy rich compassion. Grant the seasonable and healthful weather. Send gentle showers upon the earth with white bare fruit. And bless the crown of the year with thy goodness. Make the citizens of the churches to seize. Pacify the raging of the pagans, and quickly destroy the uprising of heresy by the power of thy Holy Spirit. Receive us into thy kingdom, showing us be sons and daughters of light and sons and daughters of the day. Grant us thy peace and thy love, O Lord our God, for thou hast given all things to us. And grant that with one mouth and one heart we may glorify and praise the noble majestic name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. And the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ shall be with all of you. And with your spirit. Having remembered all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. will send down upon us in return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. And we may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have
as Father, and to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Peace be unto all. And to the Spirit that thou hast done to the Lord. To thee, O Lord. O Master, Lord God, Father of compassion, and God of every consolation, Bless, sanctify, guard, strengthen, and empower those who bow their heads to thee. Make them to withdraw from every evil work. Unite them to thy every good work. And make them worthy to partake without condemnation of these thy most pure life-giving mysteries for remission of sins and for the communion of thy Holy Spirit. Through the grace and compassion and love for mankind of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. our God, out of thy holy dwelling place, the throne of glory of thy kingdom, and come to sanctify us, O thou, who sits in heart of the Father, and are here ended with cousins of us. And by thy mighty hand, deign to impart unto us the most pure body and fresh and blood, and through us to all the people. O God, cleanse me a sinner, and have mercy on me. O God, cleanse me a sinner, and have mercy on me. O God, cleanse me a sinner, and have mercy on me. That's a tad. The holy things are for the holy. What is holy? What is the Lord Jesus Christ? To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the highest. The righteous shall be in heaven.
having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate thy cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify thy holy resurrection. For thou art our God, we know no other than thee, we call on thy name. Come, O ye faithful, let us venerate Christ's holy resurrection. For behold, through the cross, joy is come into all the world. Let us ever bless the Lord, praising his resurrection, for by enduring the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death. Shine, shine unto Jerusalem, the glory of the Lord has shone in you. Exalt and be glad, O Zion, be radiant, O pure Theotokos, in the resurrection of your Son. O Christ, great and most holy Pascha, wisdom, word, and power of God, grant that we may more perfectly partake of thee in the day of thy kingdom. Wash away all the sins of all those ever here by thy precious blood, the prayers of all thy saints. O God, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. We have seen the true light. We have received the heavenly spirit. We have
Already the Feast of Palms, Palm Sunday, April the 28th, I believe, so we're kind of closing out Lent, so we kind of stick with it a couple more weeks, and Holy Week to follow, so the Lord be with us all to uh, keep us strengthened and uh, persevere in the Lenten fast, getting up to our Lord's Passion and Resurrection. So, uh, announcements-wise, uh, uh, we have a Lenten Vespers tonight at 6 p.m., so Lenten Vespers tonight at 6 p.m., Want to have one Sunday night Lenten Vespers to get a sense of transitioning back to a Lenten form of worship. We do the prayer of St. Ephraim and pick up the Lenten melody halfway through the service as we did uh, for the Sunday of Forgiveness. So seven, 6 o'clock tonight, that Vespers. Six or seven? We have seven on the I have seven? That's a mistake. It's seven, okay, six six o'clock. o'clock. Six o'clock. Sorry, six o'clock. So drum that in. Six o'clock. Okay. P- repeat after me. So, okay. Very good. Six o'clock. Okay. Uh, this afternoon, we have a focus meeting here in the parish. We're hosting at 2.30, so some of our focus members will be here on the uh, uh, what, not board. What's the advisory board. advisory board? Okay, from the focus meeting, 2.30 this afternoon. Lent investment at 6 o'clock uh, this evening. Uh, Tuesday night, I think our inquirer's class is finished, so I think the class is finished. We'll leave that one off. Uh, pre-sanctified liturgy on Wednesday at 6 o'clock with the Lenten meal to follow. Thursday night, we do the Life of St. Mary of Egypt together with part of the canon. So 7 o'clock for that, the Life of St. Mary of Egypt, part of the canon on Thursday night, this Thursday of Lent. Friday night, the entire Akathist hymn at 7 o'clock. Next Saturday, confessions from 9 to 12. Parish cleanup starting at 10 to 2 p.m. Our family ministry outing, Summit Park, 3 to 5 p.m. Torch Vesperal gathering at 4 p.m. And Great Vespers and confessions at 6 p.m. The long day Saturday, good. That sounds good, okay. So, uh, I'd like to, uh, well, we uh, received in the catechumen today, Michael and uh, Tori Lurie. So, Michael and uh, Tori are there. So, they've been <coughs> faithful to the parish, taking all our classes. So, they're now catechumens. We look forward to their entrance into the church. And we received the Lenny Towner uh, we, churching this, uh, this morning, 40 days, of course, of her new baby, Katarina. And she were, and is she here somewhere? So? Okay, well, okay, good. So, we church them uh, today. So, next week, it'll be Crystal and Baby Maverick at the early uh, in the morning here. Okay, so we're gonna venerate the cross, uh, go back to our places, hopefully uh, Steve Cristoforo, our um, focus uh, director of Nationwide, or title Steve? Director of Operations. Director of Operations for Focus, he'll address us a little bit before the uh, church school comes pouring in here. <laughs> so we'll look forward to that at least for a few minutes. So we'll venerate the cross and go to that uh, part of our morning here. I thank thee, O Lord my God, for thou hast not rejected me a sinner, but hast made me worthy to be a partaker of thy holy things. I thank thee, for thou hast permitted me, the unworthy, to commune of thy most pure and heavenly gifts. But, O Master, who lovest mankind, who for our sakes this die and rise again, and gavest us these awesome and life-creating mysteries for the good of the sanctification of our souls and bodies, let them be for the healing of the soul and body, repelling every adversary, the illumining of the eyes of my heart, the peace of my spiritual powers, a faith unashamed, a love unfeigned, the fulfilling of wisdom, the observing of thy commandments, the receiving of thy divine grace, and the attaining of thy kingdom. Preserved by them in the holiness, may I always remember thy grace and live not for myself alone, but for thee, our master and benefactor, 
May I pass from this life in hope of eternal life, and so attain to the everlasting rest where the voice of those who feast is unceasing, and the gladness of those behold the goodness of thy countenance is unending. For thou art the true desire of thine ineffable joy of those who love thee, O Christ our God, and all creation things thy praise forever. Amen. O Master, Christ our God, King of the ages, maker of all things, I thank thee for all good things that thou hast given me, especially for the communion with thy most pure and life-creating mysteries. I pray thee, O gracious lover of man, preserve me under thy protection beneath the shadow of thy wings. Enable me even to my last breath to partake worthily with pure conscience of thy holy things for the remission of the sins and unto life eternal. For thou art the bread of life, the fountain of holiness, the giver of all good to thee, we ascribe glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Freely thou hast given me the body for my food, O thou who art fire, consuming the unworthy, consume me not, O my Creator, but instead enter into my members, my veins, my heart, consume the thorns of my transgressions, cleanse my soul and sanctify my reasonings. Make firm my knees and body, illumine my five senses, nail me to the fear of thee. Always protect, guard, and keep me from soul-destroying words and deeds. Cleanse me, purify me, adorn me, give me understanding and illumination. Show me to be the temple of thy one spirit and not the home of many sins. May every evil thing, every carnal passion flee from me as from a fire as I become the tabernacle through communion. I offer thee as an inter intercessors and all the saints, the leaders of thy bodiless hosts, the forerunner of the wise apostles, the pure and blameless mother. Accept their prayer and thy love, O most, O Christ, and make me thy servant a child of light, for thou art the only sanctification and light of our souls, O good one, and to thee, our Master and God, we ascribe glory day by day. O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, let thy holy body be my eternal life, thy precious blood my remission of sins. Let this Eucharist be my joy, health, and gladness. Make me a sinner worthy to stand on thy right hand of the glory at thy awesome second coming, through the prayers of thy most pure mother of all the saints. O most holy lady Theotokos, the light of my darkened soul, my hope, my protection, my refuge, my rest, and my joy. I thank you for you have permitted me, the unworthy, to be a partaker of thy most pure body and precious blood of your Son. Give the light of thy understanding to mine eyes and my heart, you that gave birth to the true light. Enliven me with the, who I am, dead by sin, you that gave birth to the fountain of immortality. Have mercy on me, O loving Mother of the merciful God. Grant me compunction and contrition of heart, humility in my thoughts, and release from the slavery of my own reasonings, and enable me even to thy last breath to receive the sanctification of my most pure mysteries for the healing of soul and body. Grant me tears of repentance and confession that I may glorify you all the days of my life, for you are blessed and greatly glorified forever. Amen. Lord, now let us, thou thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to enlighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people, Israel. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. O Master, pardon our transgressions. O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now in heaven, and unto ages of ages. 
Amen. Your proclamation has gone out into all the earth, for it is divinely taught by hearing your voice. You expounded the nature of the creatures and ennobled the manners of men. O Holy Father of royal priesthood, entreat Christ God that our souls may be saved. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. You are revealed as a sure foundation of the church, granting all men and lordship which cannot be taken away, sealing it with your precepts, O venerable and heavenly Father, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Steadfast, protect us and Christians, constant advocate before the Creator. Do not despise the cries of us sinners, but in your goodness come speedily to help us who call on you in faith. Hasten to hear our petition and intercede for us, O Theotokos, for you always protect those who honor you. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without corruption you gave birth to God, the Word, truth, Theotokos. We magnify you in the name of the Lord. Give the blessing, Father. Amen. Um, director of operations. Oh, operations. Director of operations. Uh, when Steve came to the chalice, I thought, well, he, he's, he's Greek. I thought it's either Stavros or Stephanos. No, it's Stelianos. <laughs> there are three possibilities for Steve now. Good. So, so Steve, please go ahead. So we, uh, please make a presentation or a focus in the, for our meeting here today. Thank you, Father. Good morning, everybody. Christ is in our midst. Uh, I'm not going to say very much. I really just wanted to offer my thanks while I'm in town, uh, to thank you, the faithful of this parish in particular, for being uh, leaders and supporters of this new focus center that we've developed over the last few months. So for those of you who might not know, 
focus is the Fellowship of Orthodox Christians United to Serve. It's a nonprofit that is established by the hierarchs of the church that's called to mobilize the faithful of the church to see Christ in our neighbor, to serve Christ in our neighbor, right? To face the needs of our neighbors together. And the spirit must be blowing because we're in a spirit of, we're in a season of growth right now. We started two new centers last year. We're in the process of starting five new centers this year, glory to God. And of course, one of the ones that we started last year is right here in Cincinnati. And so last year, I remember coming here for the first time and getting a chance to get to know people and establishing our committee and trying to get all of the faithful from all of our Orthodox parishes here together to come together to cast this vision for what this center could be, what it could be like to see Christ in our neighbor, to serve, to serve Christ in our neighbor. And a lot has happened in a really short period of time. You know, this went from an idea that we had last June to now we're sitting down at, at a table with people. You know, 50, 60 people are coming together and we're breaking bread with them and sharing our lives and just kind of making the kingdom manifest in these very small mundane acts, right? We, just, we came together to eat this morning, experiencing a taste of that kingdom. We invite people together to come and eat with us. We distribute groceries for the week to get them through lean times, right? It's, there's small steps that we're taking forward to try to address the needs of our neighbors. We're having conversations about what the future might be. We're thinking about maybe establishing a warming shelter for when winters get really... There's just a lot happening. And it wouldn't have happened without the faithful of this community. And that's why I want to express my thanks. Like from the very beginning, the people of Christ the Savior really caught onto this mission, latched onto this mission, supported this mission. And I think we are where we are today because of your prayers, because of your support. And you know, one thing when I think about this parish in particular, every time I come back, it feels like the room is just that much tighter. Uh, you know, we're like you're just you're, you're bursting at the seams, right? There's clearly, if I was if I was to tra trace my sort of claustrophobic experience of being in this room over the course of the last year, there's clearly kind of a positive trajectory, which is wonderful, right? More people are coming in, more people are hearing the gospel, more people are responding to the call of the gospel. There's this upward trajectory, and I think about that up upward trajectory, and I think about the ladder of divine ascent that we're celebrating today. You know, I think in the world, sometimes we think about growth in this very acquisitive sort of way. We think about growth in this very sort of strategic sort of way. But I think the way that, the way that I had my professors at seminary very pithily describe the trajectory of the ladder, there's no ascent without descent, right? There's no resurrection without the cross. There's no salvation without sacrifice. And I think that the growth that this parish is experiencing, the growth that I'm clearly seeing, that we're all seeing with our eyes, is because this is the kind of community that is so deeply embedded in the work that Focus is trying to do across the country, right? Because this parish is so deeply invested in this liturgy after the liturgy, where we come together to receive the body of Christ, to become transformed into the body of Christ, so that we can go out there and nourish the world through our acts, through our deeds, through our words, through the unconditional love and kindness that we offer. So I... Just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for approaching these questions of growth, not strategically, but sacrificially. Thank you for approaching life with open hands rather than closed hands. Thank you for being a part of this mission, as the hierarchs have called us to live out what we preach, to practice it. And thank you for practicing it by our sides. Um, as Father said, we do have a meeting our advisory board at 2.30. If you are at all interested or curious about Focus, its mission, what we're up to, you all know Charlene, of course, our, our center director here in Cincinnati. We'll be hanging out uh, during fellowship hour. Feel free to come by, say hi, ask questions, uh, because we can. The, the more people who are called into this work, the more we can do. The more hands at the table, the more that is possible. So if you're willing to, please pray for us. Please join us in that spirit of open hands rather than closed hands. So thank you, Father, for your leadership and support, too. I'm in Queens.